Ladies, gentlemen, and druids of all ages, as the season progresses, I have found myself leveling ults more than any season prior to this, and as usual, the main thing that I really wanted to check out next with the changes is Druid, my original main class in the game. And of course, we always like to try new things, especially things new to this season, and the thing making the biggest splash for Druid right now is Wind Shear with the Calm Breeze aspect, which is significantly just overtuned and basically becomes our entire damage in itself, and just the way that that seems to interact quite strangely with the various basic skill boosting legendary aspects and some of the paragon nodes that we have as well and of course credit for the original idea of the wind shear combreeze build to ace of spades but i always like throwing my own take at something interesting messing around with it and i think i've got something quite special to share with you all today something that makes farming relatively high tier pits extremely comfortable even as a druid like this isn't by any means my top end just an example of how easy it is at this tier and the idea behind it is simply mixing multiple basic skills together for stacking global damage reduction, which behind a damage source, which is honestly likely bugged as the poison sort of infinitely stacks on multiple hits, it creates one of the most reliable and comfortable druid builds that I've experienced in a very long time. And that's saying that from the position of someone who has only been level 100 for a couple of days and whose gear is quite far from perfect. With all that said then, let's dive into these skill points and where to put them, then our spirit boons of choice as well, our legendaries and uniques to make this work and make it exceptional, the affixes that we want on all of it and then tempering specifically as it is especially important for this. Then we'll talk about the Paragon board setup and finally just a bit of how to play it from my time so far. Starting off with these skills themselves then we have three different basics which is where this gets quite funky. First off, Wind Shear itself. The poison damage from the Calm Breeze aspect doesn't increase with bonus ranks to the skill, so only the run rank. Then it's enhancement for vulnerable application and fierce Wind Shear for bonus movement speed per hit. We then just pick up the base Storm Strike the reason being you take 15% less damage for three seconds after you hit an enemy with Storm Strike. So it gives us a layer of defense of if you start taking too much damage, just start using Storm Strike once every three seconds. Then we take Maul as well as his enhancement and then also Fierce Maul to increase the range of the attack by 25%, which makes it easier to use from longer distances. And we have this for a few main reasons. It gives us a fair amount of Fortify, which is nice. It also gives us frequent sources of bear form shapeshifting, which is very helpful. But then also we have the aspect of Fevered Mauling, which gives you bonus damage reduction, stacking up to 20% based on how many times you have hit with Maul recently. So we get this to maximum stacks, and then you just have to hit with Maul once every five seconds to keep that at maximum potency. Then we go to the core node cluster, where we have exclusively passives, three ranks of Predatory Instinct for bonus critical chance against close enemies, which has a very, very specific use in this build that we will come to later. Then three ranks of Iron Fur for damage reduction when in and for three seconds after leaving, bare form. My Digitigrade game ranks here are entirely from my equipment. You don't really need more ranks than this, but they are, of course, lovely to have. Then we move on, and we're going to be grabbing Cyclone Armor here for the non-physical damage reduction that it gives us, and we also boost it to five ranks because this increases the damage reductions that it has. Then we also grab its enhancement for a slowing effect when you use the active to knock enemies back, and preserving Cyclone Armor for a general damage reduction for a couple of seconds after being hit with a 10 second internal cooldown. We then pick up Blood Howl as well as its enhancement, and then also so preserving Blood Howl, altogether giving us a sizable heal that also gives us attack speed and reduces its own cooldown when you get kills. Especially useful being our main way of entering wolf form and triggering the bonuses that we get for doing so. Then we grab one rank of Ancestral Fortitude. You can shift more ranks into here if your resistances are not maxed out from other places, and you can gain an extra 10% from this passive, but I've gotten that 10% from other sources so that I can have more skill points. It depends on your gear, really. Either way, you want at least one rank so that you can get three ranks of Vigilance, which is far more important, damage reduction for six seconds after casting a defensive skill, and we will pretty much just always have this active. Then in the next cluster, we're going to be taking three ranks of the Nature's Reach passive, which gives you significant bonus damage to distant enemies, especially ones who are slowed, stunned, immobilized, or knocked back, and we will be applying slow on every single wind shear and, well, not always feasible. Your best damage is done from long range anyways, which does make this extremely potent, and it's why I have so many extra ranks of this on my amulet as well, which I got particularly lucky to find. But that amulet is also why I have ranks of Call of the Wild. It was a misroll, it's not what I actually want. They aren't part of the build, so don't worry about those, even though the number's there. We've gone to the next cluster then, we take only one passive, three ranks of Neurotoxin here, and this is both to activate Nature's Reach, but also just to make it easier to both kite enemies and keep Nature's Reach active throughout a fight. 
This helps a ton with most non-boss enemies, which is really useful. Then we enter our final cluster here, which is where things are going to get funky once again. And here we're going to be taking Lacerate as well as its enhancements here, which is just a really underused move. This attack makes you completely immune to damage while active, sort of like Blood Mist for Necromancers. And it also provides Unstoppable as a result, which is quite useful in its own right. The other main reason that we have this though is for its secondary bonus, which is for each critical hit that you get out of the 10 hits the skill has, you gain a stacking damage bonus for the next 10 seconds, which is up to a 40% multiplier on full crits. Obviously in a crit build, this would have a much larger impact, but I have 19% crit chance, 25% against close enemies specifically because of our earlier passive. And this first crit is guaranteed in the skill, which leaves nine hits with a 25% chance of critting. That averages out a bit above two that combined with the guaranteed one makes a low average of three crits, high average of four crits, which is 12 to 16% bonus multiplicative damage for our poison for the next 10 seconds after using this, which is great. And if you get particularly good procs with your cooldown reductions in different places, you can actually cast Lacerate multiple times before the original buff drops, which would actually keep this stacking. It resets the stacks. It doesn't make them start again from the bottom. It adds onto them if they're already there. So a particularly good run through a pit with gear much better than mine. And you could almost certainly actually keep the maximum 40% bonus from this active, which would be absolutely huge. But given I don't actually have that gear myself, it's just sort of theory for those who might. After that, we just take a ton of passives, three ranks of defiance for increased nature magic damage against elites, three ranks of natural disorder for bonus storm damage to stunned, immobilized, or knocked back enemies, and three ranks of resonance. We don't have any earth skills, so this is just a pure 6% damage multiplier for our poison output. We then take three ranks of quick shift, of course, for bonus damage after changing forms, and we do that constantly, three ranks of heightened senses for bonus damage reduction and move speed when shifting forms, and then three ranks of natural fortitude for fortify gain when shapeshifting as well. Then my last three points are actually in defensive posture, and you could reroute two of these into ancestral fortitude if you need those resistances that I mentioned earlier, but I like having this here. I feel like the extra fortified generation does help me a fair bit. Then finally, for the key passive, you have a bit of a choice to make here. Ursine Strength is the simple brain off easy option. You will always get the health bonus, and unless you are pushing the very limit of what you can handle, you'll pretty much always have the 30% damage increase multiplier active all the time as well, because you will stay healthy. If you want to put a bit more thought into this for a more effective choice though, you'll want to take Bestial Rampage. This gives you bonuses for staying in each form for a few seconds, bonus attack speed after being in wolf form for three seconds, bonus damage after being in bear form for three seconds. The attack speed doesn't really matter to us, we should be hitting the cap anyways in ideal gear, but you will notice that the bonus for being in bear form for three seconds is a 50% damage bonus instead of 30% from the other key passive, and 50% is just much larger. The caveat, of course, being that you have to manually stay in bear form for three seconds out of every 15, but that works really well with what we're doing anyways because of not only Maul, which you can easily just use to stay in bear form for three seconds on occasion, but also if you then use Lacerate afterwards, directly after activating the bear form bonus, your 10 seconds of bonus damage from Lacerate stacks will be guaranteed to overlap with the bonus damage from the bear form in Bestial Rampage, which creates a really nice proper burst window for the build as well. And that does it for the skills then, so let's talk about our spirit boons for this. Wariness for increased damage reduction from elites, then we bond with the Eagle Path to actually let us take a second boon, and we'll be taking Scythe Talons for crit chance exclusively for bonus lacerate stacks, but if you are having survival issues, you can always swap this out to Iron Feather for the bonus life. Then we take Swooping Attacks for bonus attack speed, and then we grab Bolster for Fortify Gain when using defensive skills. Lastly, we take Calm Before the Storm to give Nature Magic skills a lucky hit chance to lower the cooldown of your ultimate, giving us more frequent Lacerate casts not only for the damage boost, but importantly for the unstoppable and immunity that it has too, which can be easily forgotten about. Moving on from that then, let's talk about our legendaries and uniques for the build. There is not a single unique that is required to make this build function, but they do make it quite a bit easier. If you have uber uniques. The best one for this build, if you have a choice, is Tyriel's Might. It takes an unimportant equipment slot in the chest and gives you an insane survivability boost if you have it. None of the others really fit here properly as far as uber uniques, especially as our main source of damage doesn't even benefit from skill ranks. That said, if you have Tyriel's Might, use it. If you don't, you should actually instead be using Godslayer Crown and just move my Helm aspect onto a legendary chest. Easy swap, really. Past that, we have all of our legendaries, and the most important one is actually on the amulet, which is 
Tom Breeze, giving our Wind Shear its massive poison damage. And this is on an amulet because it's actually a resource aspect, not an offensive one, or else it definitely would be on the two-handed weapon. That said, our two-handed weapon, we have the Moonrise aspect for stacking attack speed and movement speed on basic skill use that then turns into a 160% bonus damage multiplier for basic skills, which is of course incredibly strong. Then we also have the aspect of adaptability for 80% bonus basic skill damage as well, as we will always be at full spirit, and we have Edge Masters for 20% bonus damage multiplier for the exact same reason. Then we have the rapid aspect for just increased basic skill attack speed that is counted as a separate stat from pure attack speed gain in itself, which is important to note. On our boots, we have the hectic aspect, which makes it so every five basic skill uses reduces an active cooldown by two seconds. Most frequently, this will affect lacerate, which is ideal, but then it will also affect blood howl, especially on bosses where we aren't resetting its cooldown in other ways, which will in any ways just keep our attack speed and wolf form bonuses up as a result, so it's quite good regardless. Then for our defensive aspects, we have might for a 20% damage reduction after using a basic skill, and well, we have three basic skills, so yeah, that's just always active. And then finally, the aspect of Fevered Mauling for a stacking damage reduction on hits with Maul. With that then, let's talk about the actual stats and affixes on the gear itself on your weapon. You want to aim for willpower, maximum life, and damage over time. Keep in mind that while we do want a bit of crit chance, as we've talked about, crit damage itself is absolutely useless to us, so do not get that on your weapon. If you must have a different stat than these, you would want something like vulnerable damage. Ideally, you would prioritize the damage over time stat, though, if you have crit greater affix options, but on your weapon, the actually most important things will be your tempering affixes, which we will get into in a moment. On your amulet, you want attack speed and nature's reach ranks if you can get them, absolutely. But that last slot there that I have a bad passive in would ideally instead be cooldown reduction. And on your rings, you want a mix of attack speed, damage over time, willpower, and maximum life, while trying not to go over the maximum of 100% bonus attack speed. On helmet, you want willpower, cooldown reduction, and a defensive flex slot third. This could be a resistance you are missing, armor if you need more, anything like that. I am currently overcapped on armor personally due to my own gear. On gloves, you want willpower, attack speed, and then you could either go for damage over time for a bit more damage, or use this as another defensive flex affix, depending on what your stats are in need of. For pants, willpower, maximum life, and another defensive flex put what you need. Then on your boots, willpower, maximum life. And then I like having an armor in this last slot specifically personally, just because it's nice to have it on your boots, but you could go for more movement speed if you feel lacking outside of wolf form. As for tempering specifically then, on your weapon, the main tempers are extremely important. And the first one is to have a chance to fire wind shear projectiles twice. You want this affix and you want it in as high a roll as you can get really, because think about it, every time that it doubles a projectile, projectile, you're essentially doing double damage that cast, but then also extremely importantly, you want to roll damage to distant enemies in the offense slot. You could absolutely make arguments for using damage to close enemies. We do wind up close a lot within this build, but the ideal damaging situations are long range as that takes use of nature's reaches bonuses and things like that. And given that we have a burst window in this version of the build, we can sort of just walk around and work around that to be purposely further ranged in those burst moments. But put simply, you want damage to distant enemies because it is the higher rolling affix between close and distant damage, and because of the Thunderstruck Paragon node that gives our entire damage a multiplier bonus based on how much of those stats we have combined. So put simply, ideally all of your offense tempers would be distant damage, but some close damage on them is not the end of the world by any means, it would just be a little bit imperfect. And for the most part, these are what you want to focus your major upgrades on while masterworking too, to just get even further bonus damage multipliers. On movement tempers then, you want ranks of Digitigrade gate for bonus movement speed in and after leaving wolf form and for resource tempers it actually doesn't affect this build at all at least the druid resource tempers don't but i should mention that if you do have a high level necromancer there is a tempering manual that they have right here which gives you just general ultimate cooldown reduction which you can put onto a ring on a necromancer before sending it back to your druid druid does not normally have access to this tempering affix and it can roll as high as 10 percent per ring you could even justify doing this on your amulet too instead of some of the digital grade gate ranks that I have, which would total be 30% bonus cooldown reduction on Lacerate before even considering masterworking. Then finally, in your defensive temper slots, you just want to fill any holes, any armor that you're missing, any resistances, or just maximum life bonuses, really. And for utility, there again isn't overly anything great for us in this build, so we just go for the various worldly fortune, crowd control, lucky hit applications to help manage groups and keep our ranged advantage.
Mage, and to trigger the Godslayer Crown if you're using the build without Tyriel's Might. For your gems then, in your jewelry slots you want to fill what needs fulling basically for your resistances and armor, then you want Topazes in your weapon slots for basic skill bonus damage. In your armor we're going to be having rubies for bonus maximum health, because nothing that we actually want on our Paragon board would actually benefit from the bonus stat gems. With all that covered then, let's move on to our actual Paragon board setup. On the starting board you want to head up the left side through the maximum life rare node up to the glyph socket itself and stick in territorial for bonus damage and damage reduction from close enemies. You want to get the dexterity to activate it as well, stick on the both rare nodes on either side that are in the radius, then head up the right side to the board exit and in here we're going to be putting on the thunderstruck board, the most important board that we have by far. You want to head over to the glyph socket itself through the rare and magic nodes on the way which are damage reduction from vulnerable and storm skill damage and in the glyph socket you want to put in keeper for a bonus to these nearby rare nodes and then also the secondary effect of a bonus damage multiplier to non-physical damage including poison. We then head over through the middle of the board itself to grab the legendary node up here which is thunderstruck which makes your storm skills have bonus damage equal to a percentage of distant and close enemy damage bonuses which for my current stats puts me at dealing 178% bonus damage just straight up. This paragon node is silly and it is why storm builds are undoubtedly the best druid options right now just as a whole. Then we actually round over and exit out of the right side of the board to stick on the heightened malice board like so. Down over here you want to get to the glyph socket itself through the rare and magic nodes again and here we're going to be putting in the earth and sky glyph. This gives you a bonus to the magic nodes in the radius and also a bonus damage multiplier against vulnerable enemies with storm skills which obviously is fantastic for us. We're then going to be jumping over to the bonus damage to both poisoned enemies and elites rare and magic nodes over here and then we're going to be leaving out of the bottom side of the board through the board attachment gate where we'll be attaching on constricting tendrils. Here you want to go again through the rare and magic nodes to get to the glyph socket itself, inside of which we'll be putting the tracker glyph. This gives you bonus damage to poisoned enemies, which is obviously very good, but the additional bonus is extremely powerful, which is just a 40% increase on all poison damage effects, which is basically a 40% poison damage increase, just, you know, without the actual burst to begin with. Then we're going to take obviously the dexterity to activate this within the radius and then head out the right side of the board this time to attach on the ancestral guidance board. Here you want to head through the rare and magic node once again, but only the one of them over here, the resistance to all elements, to get to the glyph socket itself, inside of which you want to put the human glyph, which gives you bonus damage in human form, but also bonus damage reduction while in human form too, which is quite nice for us. Then you of course want to activate it with the actual willpower in the radius, and then head out to the top side of the board, attaching on the inner beast board like so, and then you want to head up once again through rare and magic nodes here for just armor and willpower to get to the glyph socket, and inside of this one we will be putting bane. This gives you increased poison damage for the intelligence in the radius, but also the additional effect of a 15% chance to deal double the amount of poison damage over its initial duration, which is quite powerful. Then you of course want to get the intelligence to actually activate this within the radius before heading out the left side of the board, reconnecting to heightened malice, and going right up to that legendary node itself for a 45% increased damage multiplier while there are three or more poisoned enemies nearby. You can of course here stop for the rare poison resistance node if you are in need of that, it helps my build personally. Then with our final points we're actually going to go up and out through the top side of this board, stopping in the lightning resistance rare and magic nodes, again because it helps just even it out for me personally, and we're going to attach on our final board which is lust for carnage. Here we have one goal. We're going to the glyph socket and we're going to be sticking in the undaunted glyph. This gives you bonus damage while fortified for every bit of intelligence purchased in the radius, but more importantly, it's an extra up to 10% damage reduction the more fortify that you have. So we of course activate this with our last remaining points just to get that one final bit of damage reduction bonus, which is honestly quite good. That just about does it then as far as the entire setup goes, so what about actually playing it? Well, this one does get a bit funky. Your best damage and safest position is to fight at long range, but enemies often won't let you do that for long. Maul is your best friend if you are doing content that needs more damage reduction, get it up to 5 stacks, then just use it once every 5 seconds to keep it at full bonus. The actual range on this is surprisingly high as well. If you need even more survivability than that, then you do have to walk into closer range and hit things with storm strike once every 3 seconds for a further damage reduction stacked with the others. Use blood howl every time that the buff itself is inactive, which you can see by the green bar under it, otherwise use it on cooldown. Cyclone armor you only want to use the active of when you need to knock 
block enemies away from you and clear some space, otherwise it's better to leave it off cooldown to let your other things benefit more from Hectic. Then finally we have Lacerate, which is where some of the fun play comes in. The skill has multiple strong uses in this build. It is essentially our main form of unstoppable here, so you don't want to just use it thoughtlessly, you want to keep it in case you need it, but we also have enough cooldown reduction sources that it will be up pretty frequently. It gives us immunity while it is active, which makes it incredibly good in a pinch as an emergency defensive option, and it is also a tool that we can use to just give us a timed damage buff if we don't need to reserve it for survivability. I mentioned it earlier, but the big burst combo is sit in bear form for three seconds using maul, maybe even while you're running between packs if you can, then lacerate while on top of the enemies. Blood howl and then spam wind shear and your damage will skyrocket for the next few seconds. That is the burst window. That's it for today then everyone, just a triple basic skill wind shear version based heavily around comfort and honestly using some pretty underutilized interactions that Druid has gained in recent times that I just thought would be a ton of fun and it's extremely potent as well. I hope you've all enjoyed the build and I hope you enjoy using it yourself if you try it out on your own. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye